All right, welcome back to One Man's Faith, part two. Uh, we're looking at the seven areas of influence. That, uh, right now, I'm talking about the media. We talked about this extensively last week, but I had a couple things I wanted to add to it. Um, I, as, just before we went on break, I said it proclaims and exposes unrighteousness, but it has no biblical worldview. It just shows and doesn't bring hope. It brings, it brings hopelessness and despair. And in Proverbs 22, verse 20 and 21, it says, Have I not written for you 30 sayings containing counsel and knowledge to teach you true and reliable advice so that you can give truthful answers to those who sent you? You see, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to we're, we're supposed to write out you know like, like in a, you know like newspapers you know you know that's a written that's a written media. Well, the news is the same thing. They write it out and they read it. As a matter of fact, you don't realize they're reading it because it shows up on on the camera. They, there's a there's a, a a projector there, and so they see the words as they're looking at you. But it's written out so that they can follow it. Instead of being like me and just coming off top of your, my head, where it sometimes works and sometimes it doesn't, I know. But we are to bring truth and reliable information, not influence people through journalism. Let me give you some examples. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I got this. I got this. Uh, I got this letter in the mail. Uh, the top of it says, "Yes to question two, regulate marijuana." And it says, "Dear Mr. Owen, or current pastor, this was written to pastors. I'm writing to you today as a fellow clergyman in Nevada to ask you for your help on an important issue facing our community." This Nevada, this this November, Nevadans will vote on question two, which will establish a new approach that regulates taxes and controls marijuana, as it does alcohol. Please read and sign the reply card for your support. If you support this sensible change, well, I don't support it. It's wrong, and I'm going to tell you. I'm going to ask you, vote. No on question two. And here's some of her reasons. Now, this is a senator uh, from District 1, and she's a clergy person, and she wants us to believe in that regulation and taxing is good. And let, now this is not medical marijuana, this is personal marijuana, okay? Here's some of her things. A system of control and regulation makes more sense than what we have now. By all measures, Nevada's marijuana laws have failed. Our prisons are full in large part due to our drug laws. Each year, our state spends millions of dollars to arrest adults for possessing marijuana. Our police waste precious time enforcing these policies, and countless human lives are wasted. Despite all these efforts, about three-quarters of teenagers in national surveys consistently report that marijuana is fairly or very easy to get. So what? You know, this is kind of the same argument they use with prostitution. Now, some of you may think, oh, I don't care if we have prostitution. We make money off of it. Well... No, we don't really make any money off of it. Not enough to really count. I remember one lady wrote, uh, our, our church was involved in two election cycles back in the uh, 2004 or six area, somewhere in there, to bring the issue to the ballot to do away with prostitution in Nye County, all right? And one of the arguments, and a lady wrote, says, I don't care if we have prostitution. My husband doesn't go there, so it's all right. (sighs) 
That's almost the same arguments that are being used now. It was the same arguments they used for abortion. Oh, people are going to go ahead and do it. We might as well, we might as well regulate it. No, 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 no. It's wrong. It's wrong. Listen, it's still a drug. It's th- and whether you think it or not, it's an hallucinogenic. It messes up with your mind. As a matter of fact, you're not supposed to drive or work heavy equipment under its influence, even those that are on medical marijuana. It's not right. Listen. Many ages ago, I dabbled in it. I'll tell you right now. Just going to be honest with you. So I know from personal experience what marijuana does. It's not right. And when you allow it to, uh, I guess in a sense, fog your mind up, which, I mean, I mean it does, you know, it, it puts things there. What it does is it brings demonic influence into your head. It's not the way God expected us to live. And if it's so safe, why are there laws against driving while under the influence of marijuana? We're just opening a can of worms. What we need to do is get stricter with it so that it is not fairly or very easy to get. Personally, I don't believe in the miracle marijuana. I know I've heard testimonies of it being a good influence. I mean, not an influence, being being something that helps with certain um, uh, conditions that a person has. But it's still a, it's still a drug that will bring demonic influence into your life even if you're th- supposedly using it for good medical purposes. And listen, I know Almost anybody can get a miracle marijuana card. They're almost passing them out like candy. Contrary to what people will tell you. It doesn't take much of a condition of any kind to get one. And so we have people... And, it, you know, it's almost gets, it, you know, you know, it's bad enough in Nevada that we've got to watch out for, for alcoholic influence in driving. But now we want to add another? So I'm going to, I'm going to request, suggest that you say no to question two. Do not, I think one of the reasons we're having I mean, I mean, I don't know if you realize it, but with, there are quite a few pot-growing areas in Pahrump. And I don't think they're building up just for miracle, medical marijuana. I think they're expecting question two to pass, and they want to be ready to be able to expand even more. We don't need this. And I believe, biblically, it's wrong. But that's, you know, that's how they use media. And, you know, it's probably yours and my dollar that paid for this. That bugs me, too. I get a newsletter from an organization called uh, Intercessors for America. Let me just read two uh Two newsworthy articles here. 
several media figures are actively lobbying their peers to ch challenge Donald Trump more aggressively when interviewing him or his surrogates, or even blocking Trump's campaign from gaining access to the press in some cases. Trump's campaign has, has benefited from earned media and has put him in a position that he doesn't have to run campaign ads as much. The one that's kind of spearheading this is Jorge Ramos, who is the anchor of the Spanish uh, language Univision. And he became infamous in being the journalist that uh, uh, challenged uh, or had that clash with Trump over immigration. Okay? And so we don't hear this, but you can actually see this influence. If you'll... If you'll watch the news, most of the news is anti-Trump, pro-Hillary. Most of the news is liberal. And so, therefore, it's going to be against. You know, yes, you're hearing people like some businessman coming out against Trump. Well, that's because Trump wants to change things, even even in the business, because he knows what's going on. We've got to be careful with what we read and what we hear on TV. Uh, ben Carson had kind of lost in the primary. I believe one of the reasons he lost was because of the media and the media saying, saying negative things against him, kind of like they're doing Trump. But they would also say, like, oh, he's low in the polls. Thank God last night I, I read where he's only, what, like six points behind Hillary now, where he was 10 or more. You see, I'm, what I'm praying is that the truth is going to come out because I think there are things about Miss Clinton that are evil, wrong, and we don't want something like that in the White House. All right, I got to go on a break, so think about that for a minute, and I'll be right back. <laughs> 